What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. You can almost call this a Pokemon Legends Arceus video, but what we're going to be talking about today is the fact that these are all new moves introduced into Pokemon Legends Arceus and uh, I, I just want to talk about how I think they're going to find their way into uh, Scarlet and Violet because that's the thing, right? We had these moves introduced into Legends Arceus and Legends Arceus is a bit notorious for messing around with mechanics of the game. Like we had Frostbite instead of Freeze, which we still don't know if that's confirmed for Gen 9. I hope it is. Honestly, that sounds amazing. Uh, and we had like a bunch of weird stuff. You could move even when you were asleep because it was actually called Drowsiness, which is, I don't know. It was, it was a weird game, but I really enjoyed it. So what I want to go through is this list of moves and talk about whether or not I think it's going to make it into Gen 9 as a whole uh, and how I think they're going to rebalance it. So yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And answer my comment question of the day, which one of these moves are you most excited for, and which one do you hope doesn't make it in? Anyways, let's get into it. So, uh, we're just going to go down the list on Cerebi, and hopefully I can remember all the Pokemon that get these. So yeah, uh, Barbarage, that is move number one. Let me actually zoom in a little bit here to make it easier for you guys to, to see. Yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, so, Barbarage. This is a poison move. I believe this is the exclusive move of Overquill and Hisuian Quillfish. By the way, sorry if I'm a little bit out of breath. I just finished uh, lifting, so I'm like really tired, uh, but I needed to make sure I got a video out today. But yeah, um, so Overquill and Hisuian Quillfish. These guys are dark and poison types, right? Dark and poison is a phenomenal typing. Oh my god, you only have one weakness. Like, oh my god, I really should have like waited to record this video i'm tired but yeah my one of my favorite pokemon ever is alolan muck i actually just made a video about this guy but alolan muck has dark and poison typing it's only weak to ground and yes ground is a fairly common typing in competitive but like who are you gonna face you're gonna face landris cool all right uh put a nine tails on the team oh look landris gone anyways you have no weaknesses left but uh obviously you know terrestrialization is a thing but we're just going to talk about the move you know we're going to we're going to ignore terrestrialization for today i just need to go on that one tangent that this is an amazing typing but barbarage is 60 base power 15 pp the user launches countless toxic barbs to inflict damage this may also poison the target the move's power is doubled if the target has a status condition okay well i mean this is literally just like hex i would imagine that this uh move it says it's 60 base power right now but like if we look at hex i think Hex is like 65. Yeah, Hex is 65. Power doubles the target has a status ailment. Um, yeah, so I, I guess this is almost like Venishock, right? Here, let me pull up Venishock. Venishock is what base power? 65. Okay, so I mean like Venishock is specific to um, if the target is poisoned in... I, don't, I guess this is like a middle ground between Venishock and Hex, right? So it's it's got less base power, but it's not picky with the status condition. So like a, para, uh, a paralyzed Pokemon can be hit with double base power. And at that, uh, it's a physical move, which separates it from both of those previously existing moves. So I think this is actually like a really solid attack, to be honest, especially if this move can combo into itself. Because like I said, it's 60 base power, right? So, but it has a chance to poison. Usually these things are like 30% chance to poison. So if you get that 30% chance to poison, the next move is 120 base power. Obviously you can do other things. You can like combo this thing with a Grim Snarl, go for like Thunder Wave into Barbarage, which is absolutely absurd. So yeah, I think that's going to be like actually a really good move for this Pokemon, especially since it, you know, it can combo into itself. You could run Poison Jab for like 80, 80 base power, which is only 20 more. But this thing has more chance to snowball, so it depends, you know? It really depends on what you want to build. Bitter Malice. The user targets or you the user attacks the target with a spine chilling resentment. This may also leave the target with frostbite. This means power is doubled. Oh my god, we have so many of these. This is just hex. Yeah, 60 base power. This is just hex. So they're gonna have to rework this move. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. Um, if it has the chance to frostbite, maybe this is going to be kind of like freezing glare, but instead of having a chance to, instead of being like a, a psychic move with a chance to freeze, which if you don't know, freezing glare is the signature move of, um, Galarian Articuno. 
It's a 90 base power, 10% chance to freeze the target. I could see them keeping it the way it is and just making it like ghost type freezing glare with a chance to combo. Uh, but I could also see it maybe just not being in the game. This is a weird one that they would have to rework quite a bit. So I don't know. It might be in the game. It might not. Bleak Wind Storm. This is going to be Tornadus. It's so weird that they gave Tornadus new moves. Like all like the genies getting new moves in this game was absurd to me. Bleak Wind Storm. Uh, Savage the Cold Winds cause both body and spirit to tremble. This may also leave the target with Frostbite. I mean, what it says on the tin, you know? Um, Bleak Wind Storm, 95 base power. Honestly, if they give this thing 95 base power move with a chance to freeze, or if they add Frostbite to the game, that'd be a little bit crazy. I, I really hope they do that, but we're just assuming they don't right now because it's unconfirmed. I don't think that would be run on it. I think you would still go with Hurricane. I mean, it's not that big of a jump in base power, 95 to 110. It depends, right? If you're running Tornadus next to Kyogre, you still run Hurricane, but Bleak Wind Storm is better overall because lots of people will run like Air Slash on this guy already. So, I mean, yeah, I could see it. Then again, it isn't perfect accuracy, so actually, I guess Hurricane's much better. Now that I'm looking at that accuracy, yeah, run Hurricane. No, okay. Ceaseless Edge is... Oh, what is this one? Ceaseless Edge. This is the, the Samurott move. Samurott Hisui. Uh, 108, 108. What is this? The user slashes its shell blade at the target, aiming land a critical hit. Uh, small shell splinters left behind by this attack will continue to damage the target for several turns. Um, I don't know. I feel like if they do anything with this, what they could do is make it like a dark type move that also sets up spikes. Because they did rework. This is the weird part about all these moves, right? All these moves ended up uh, having like just different interactions as a whole like stealth rocks does damage in this game i don't think they're going to keep that but yeah i mean i could see this being like a move that sets up spikes and is still just 65 base power with a high crit rate that wouldn't be that bad in fact it'd be like absolutely busted on samurai that thing could be OU like instantly or like for vgc there's like no reason not to run that move you know it's just slightly weaker than night slash and you get spikes up like that's actually really good but that's that's a big assumption if they keep that yeah, my assumption is that it's just going to be like, you know, I, I mean, no, that's the thing, right? It's worse than Night Slash if it's 65 base power. So they have to keep that. They have to keep the uh, like some kind of secondary effect to it. Maybe it'll trap it. They could actually add like splinters as an effect, like, you know, just residual damage. I mean, that that's a thing. We have Magma Storm. We have like Sand, uh, sand Tomb. So, you know, they could do that. Chloroblast. 120 base power excuse me my computer just did the thing 120 base power 95 percent accuracy 5 pp the user launches it's a mass chlorophyll to inflict damage on the target this also damages the user and lowers the user's action speed so i mean this is basically special close combat e kind of move for uh hisuian electrode and i guess close combat isn't really like the right uh comparison to make how do I say it? So it's like hammer arm, right? So hammer arm, how much is that? Is that 122? It's 100. I mean, it's 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 hammer arm, but special in 120 base power and grass. It's the same sort of interaction. Sorry, I like to like draw these analogies to like different moves because that's the easiest way to think about it in competitive, in my opinion. Um, Yeah, that's like a busted move, actually. I mean, coming off of this thing, if you have 120 base power, that makes up for the abysmally low 80 special attack. I've actually used a support electrode back in BDSP VGC back when we were doing that. Um, and it's like a decent support Pokemon. Honestly, electrode itself isn't bad. 150 base power, 80 special attack. It doesn't hit nearly as hard as Regieleki, but in like non-Dynamax in like a less power crept format like the regional decks that we're probably going to be playing in, uh, there's a good chance it could be like a decent Pokemon, you know? Uh, I, I think that just having that grass type carries it quite a bit because you're able to deal with, yes, you know, opposing water types because you're like grass and electric, but the main thing is the ground types that would otherwise wall out electric types. Being a grass type allows you to hit things with Chloroblast. So, you know, in previous formats, if you were going up against like a Hippowdon with a uh, Electrode, there's no shot that your regular Electrode's non-stab energy ball is going to one-shot this Hippowdon, but you know, you slap a life orb on this thing and all of a sudden you, you got a chance. 108 HP, 72 special defense. It, it's It's got potential. Like it, it needs to keep that base power though. I think if it goes down to like 110, it's still usable, but 100 things get real shaky. 
Dire Claw, the user lashes out with Ruinous Claws, aiming to land a critical hit. This may also leave the target Poison, Paralyzed, or Dra That's a busted move. Um, I believe that's on Sneasler. Yeah. Fighting Poison type 120, 130. I'm pretty sure this thing gets... It's probably going to get fake out if we're being real, but coming off of this thing, that's, that's kind of a crazy move. Honestly, I don't think that you're going to want to run this unless it has a higher base power, because what you can do is, like, choice ban this mod, and 130... Um, was it 130 120 allows it outspeed a ton of pokemon in the format and hit them with like close combat or poison jab or if it gets gunk shot even that's good but if it doesn't get either of those yeah i guess run dire claw i don't know like the the secondary effect thing makes it like it, this is the sort of move you would want to see in a pokemon that can run assault vest well and yeah i guess sneezer could run assault vest well it's got 80 hp and 80 special defense but this thing's gonna want to be like choice banded life or focus sash something like that you know I, I just don't see it working out for it Esperwing, uh, this is for Hisuian, what is it, Braviary. So 90 base power, or was it 90 accuracy, 75 base power, 10 PP. Uh, it's just a high crit move, speed increasing psychic attack, and it looks like it's a special. 75 base power, 90% accuracy. I could see both of these things being true for it. I think what it's going to end up being is special psycho cut, though. I don't think they're going to keep that you know, raises users action speed thing. It seems a little bit busted, but I think that like special psycho cut is actually a pretty niche enough move that this thing could run it. Um, obviously, you know, you could run psychic, right? Psychic is a thing that this thing would probably want to run for, you know, just the pure special attack. Um, but, oh, I guess, and also sheer force life orb. Oh, let me see. It, it depends. If it's like a chance to raise speed, yeah, go ahead, run the other one. But like, for sheer like wall breaking capabilities, no, this thing this thing has to run psychic, like it because psychic has that chance to drop special defense. Your sheer force life are boosted, and your and that stab coming off a of one twelve. This is hitting like Landorus Eye levels of power if you use psychic, because Landorus Eye is like what one fifteen base special attack with life orb, and it one shots so many things. Psychic and flying typing. If this thing gets hurricane on it, busted Pokemon. Like you can one shot so many things with this thing. Yeah, no, don't run this move. You're you're gonna want to do the Life Orb Sheer Force set. Headlong Rush. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Hold on. So a couple of Pokemon get this. Um, I believe this is a new move that Torterra gets, as well as a new move that um, what's it called? I love this Pokemon. What is it called? Ursaluna. Ursaluna gets this move. Uh, and this is just ground type close combat. <laughs> that sounds busted, right? We already have high horsepower. If these two things get ground type close combat, Torterra, if it's like, you know, a niche move that only Torterra and this thing get, this thing is going to like, at least for singles, rise up so much in usage. Earthquake is like only 100 base power, which sounds weird to say only, but like coming off a 109 attack, no, not nearly enough. You you can choice ban Torterra now and hit things with wood hammer and freaking headlong rush. And this thing Oh my god. So Earthquake's obviously an option for you. You can do Stab Guts uh, Facade and Stab Guts Earthquake. Those are two things. But Ground Type Close Combat, you know, 120 base power, but Ground Type and Stab, dude, busted. You're hitting everything. Like, I, it's just better high horsepower. And it's 100, it's 100 accuracy. Obviously, this says 100 power, but that's the thing. Um, in this game, close combat was also 100 power. So I would assume this thing has to become 120. It's got to. I really hope it does. This is like the move I'm most excited to spam. Uh, Infernal Parade. This is uh, Hisuian. What is it called? Hisuian uh, Typhlosion. Yeah. Ghost type. I believe this is just another hex. This is hex, but can combo into itself. It's fine. I think that if you want to run Typhlosion... It's 95 speed, 119 base special attack. It hits hard enough, right? You know, like if you switch in on like a, a heat wave, you can hit something back with like specs moves. I think it's going to be like a specs monster. I don't think you're going to want to run this move for the most part. Like you want that initial damage. It's not a support mon unless... I guess you could do like a support set. You know, it's got the stats for it. It's unflinchable, so you can do like unflinchable Will-O-Wisp, which we can only assume that this thing gets. Um, I would say probably like heat wave... Or whatever. I guess you could just do Will O Wisp and then Infernal Parade. I don't know, because that is just Hex. But Shadow Ball is probably better for the initial damage. And it's it's a weird move. Lunar Blessing. This user heals its own status conditions and restores HP. Incoming moves become more likely to miss. This move. Sorry, I just double backed up. This move cannot be allowed in the game. 
I, I'm sorry. Look, so Cresselia is already a busted Pokemon for VGC. Very hard to break. In Gen 7, max special attack, uh, Ghost DMZ, Shadow Ball, Aegislash wasn't able to one-shot this thing a lot of the time. No, we can't give this thing recovery and stat removal. Like, it, this move is not making it in the game. If it makes it in the game, we have failed as a species. User heals its own status conditions and restores HP. No, no, we're not doing and, and also raises evasion. I don't care how they rebalance this move. You do not give Cresselia recovery. That's the only thing keeping it from being broken. Mountain Gale. Sorry, I just went on that tangent. That is literally the only thing keeping it from being broken. Uh, that's Hisui and Avalug. Uh, Mountain Gale is pretty cool. It's, uh, what is this? This is 100 base power, 85 accuracy. It's, I don't know. It's It would need to be a little bit more accurate because we have... You know, Icicle Crash? What is Icicle Crash again? Like, what's the accuracy on that thing? It's 85, right? Icicle Crash. Uh, it's 90, and it's 85 power. I mean, yeah, if you want the eight, the extra power, I guess it's worth the, the trade. You would have to choice ban this thing. And it gets Ice Shard, too. I'm pretty sure that this form of Avalog gets Ice Shard as well. It's not listed here because the original one doesn't get it, but in the game, it got Ice Shard. So if it gets this, you know, choice ban Avalog is probably the play. Mystical power, uh, 90 accuracy, 70 base uh, power, 10 PP. User strengthens itself with a mysterious power. It ex If it excels in offense, offensive stats are raised. If it excels in defense, defensive stats are raised. So I guess this becomes like, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think in the game it was plus two. And this is like the signature move of like Azelf, Yuxi, and like that trio. Uh, this guy already gets Swords Dance, I believe. He gets Nasty Plot, I know that much. Yeah, this thing already gets Nasty Plot, and it wants to run Nasty Plot, so, like, you know, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Uh, Mesperit, I believe, also already gets Nasty Plot, and it doesn't want to run a physical set. And Yuxi, I believe, it doesn't get Iron Defense, does it? It doesn't, no. The only Pokemon that's going to benefit from this is probably going to be Yuxi. Like, probably, especially if it's, like, basically cosmic power does this thing get cosmic power it doesn't get cosmic power no if this thing gets cosmic power like uxy becomes a little bit more usable so that's like the only pokemon that's gonna benefit from it um oh wait no i guess it, i guess it is an attacking move never mind sorry i missed that entirely that is an attacking move uh i could see them running it i could see them running it like you could choice specs any one of them and use that uh for azolf i guess it would be the best one to choice specs because i don't know if it's like 100% chance to raise that stat. Yeah, busted move. If it's like 30, still pretty decent. If it's, you know, it would need to be at least 30 to be usable. 30% chance to do that. Power shift, that is just power swap or power trick. I don't really care about that one. Psy shield bash. Cloaking itself in psychic energy, the user slams itself into the target. This may also raise the target's or the user's defensive stats. Um, Let me think. So who got that one? Psy Shield Bash. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Isui. I'm like blanking on who got Psy Shield Bash. Who got this move? Let me see. I'm like missing it. Like it's just, it's missing. Oh, it was Stantler and Weirdier. Um, I mean, I guess they could use it. Uh, it, it seems pretty okay. Let me see. So Psy Shield Bash. Uh, sorry, I got to read that again. 90 accuracy seems kind of iffy. 70 attack is kind of bad. May use their use. I mean, I guess it's it's like a, a less reliable Zen Headbutt because I believe Zen Headbutt's also 90 accuracy and has a chance to flinch. For these guys, I mean, Weird Ear is already confirmed to have Intimidate. Um, yeah, I guess this is the best move for it. If you want to run Zen Headbutt, you could. And it's got like bad speed and it's decently bulky yeah yeah i guess it's fine it doesn't seem like a great move sorry i'm like i'm trying to think of these in like the context of like the wider game balance but like for individual pokemon these are pretty meh you know i, don't, I just don't think it's a great move especially if like it gets distributed to different things because most of these are um signature moves but i we can only assume they get distributed a little bit better raging fury the user rampages and view and spews vicious flames to inflict damage then becomes fixated on using this move is this this is Arcanine. Okay. And Infer- Oh, wait. That's actually kind of crazy. Let's keep that in mind. Um, 90 power, 85 accuracy. I mean, both of these mons get Flare Blitzed. Or get Flare Blitzed. That's a bad move. Yeah, no. I, I, if if they were, like, 
lacking a flare blitz already yeah this is a fine move it's outrage you can choice band it but it, this thing needs to become like outrage power you know um you could choice ban like uh an, an arcanine and just deal major damage with that thing you know and and just I, i'm thinking about for like singles in doubles you still want flare blitz but for like singles you know you can choice ban an infernape or an arcanine and if it's like 120 base power it's worth it because you don't take any recoil um and you're like locked into using the move so it's like fine anyways but like for doubles you're not going to be able to choose your target that's usually the nature of moves like outrage so i just don't see it good uh, being good sandseer storm this is terrifying okay user attacks by wrapping its target in fierce wind searing hot by sand or and searingly hot sand the this also leaves the target with a burn um yeah so this thing is what 95 base power Okay, I'm gonna show you guys something terrifying. I released a short the other day about Landorus Incarnate being busted um, because it has access to Sheer Force, Life Orb, Earth Power. And I already talked about that earlier with like, you know, Hisui and Braviary, how it can one-shot a lot of things with its stats. This is stronger in, li in Life Orb, Earth Power, off a of 90 base power is like one-shotting a lot of things. This is just a five power boost to Earth Power. You one-shot more things, right? It's less accurate though but slightly higher reward. I would still say earth power is better, but for like wall breaking sets, if this thing wasn't breaking enough walls, like the Kool-Aid man, you know, like, I guess you could go with this, you know, it's fine. Uh, what was it? Shelter. This makes the skin hard as an iron shield, raising its defensive stats. Uh, incoming moves also become more likely to miss. I think this is just iron defense. Obviously this is like Hisui and Gudra. Um, it's just iron defense unless it raises both. I guess this thing could be like a special cosmic power for Gudra, but I don't know. It, it would need that like evasion boost to also be quite good, but I think that it's like not a good combination. You know, you would much rather just go for like iron defense body press, you know, this thing's probably going to get iron defense because it's a steel type uh, in the main games. So yeah, I, I don't think this is going to be the best move for it unless it has some kind of secondary effect. Like if this thing is iron defense, plus something else like let's say for that turn you're immune to status like you can't be toxic or like slept or anything busted you know amazing great move you can use that to like iron defense in front of amoongus i don't think they're, they're going to rework it that way i think it's probably just going to be like an iron defense clone with like a slight benefit who knows maybe like more pp uh but for the most part it seems very mid spring tide storm 95 uh base power 80 accuracy uh, this is just fairy type windbreak storm or whatever. Uh, and this is the new genie. Um, what is it called? Enamorous. I actually really like Enamorous. I think Enamorous is cool, especially Enamorous Therian. Uh, I'm excited to use Enamorous Therian. I like the turtle. We have a defensive genie. Uh, but this thing has two abilities, Overcoat and Healer or Contrary. Obviously, if this thing gets superpower, it's amazing. We're not going to talk about that right now. For this move, this thing hits pretty hard. 135 base power. 106 speed that screams choice specs to me and i don't know a lot of people are like what if it gets floor can it's they're not giving this thing floor cannon stop being crazy springtide storm 80 percent accuracy 95 base power they're probably gonna raise it to like 100 or maybe like make this accuracy like you know 90 but i don't know oh, moves effects depend on user's form i don't know uh does it give me more here boosting all user stats oh my god no that's busted what so if the user's in incarnate form, it has a chance of boosting the user's stats for three turns. And if it's in Therian form, chance of boosting the user's defenses for three or lowering the target's defenses for three turns. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to rework that. I think it's just going to be like a slightly stronger Moonblast, like 110 Moonblast. I hope so. Oh, my God. Uh, Stone Axe. This is just like Stealth Rock setting up move. I think that's fine. It would it would make um it would make whatever his name is. Cleaver viable in vgc in my opinion just for the fact that the reason vgc players don't use stealth rocks is yes they're beneficial to you in every single situation but no they're never worth setting up you would much rather go for like fake out plus trick room fake out plus like a ko fake out plus like a sword stance you get much more benefit out of that stealth rocks are rarely used in vgc so if this thing has a move that has a chance to crit and is able to set up stealth rocks for free yeah go ahead you know people will run that take heart um listed spirits i mean this isn't going to be a vgc relevant move i'm pretty sure yeah it's manaphy so i'll just kind of skip over it but i guess i'll give it a, a second 
Deals with status conditions, raises its offensive indie. It's probably just like calm mind, but like you also heal. So that's a little bit busted. I don't think it's going to make it into the game. That seems like an exclusive move. Triple arrows. Actually, I'm really excited about this one. Um, so Decidueye is a fighting grass type. It has a lot of competition and all of them are better than it. This thing's bulkier than most of the other fighting grass types, but like Breloom just outclasses it by the fact that it's a faster, stronger fighting grass type. Um, but this thing can run a crit set. You use long reach, you use scope lens, and you use triple arrows because triple arrows is just a um, fighting type move with a low base power. However, it has a built-in focus energy to it. So if you want to use scope lens, you can, after one triple arrows, basically guarantee that you get the um, that you get the uh, the critical hit, which is just really nice, especially for like wall breaking things like iron defense, body press, steel types, or just having those guaranteed crits is generally nice, especially since you have Leaf Blade, which is a move that's a 90 base power and, you know, you have stab on that and just it, it wall breaks very well. This thing's going to be a wall breaker, if anything. Choice Band could also be a set, but I think for the most part, you're going to run like scope blend sets. Victor this move cannot make it in the game. Once again, Victory Dance. The user performs a dance to usher in victory. This raises the user's offensive and de defensive stats and increases the damage dealt by the user by 50%. No, we're not doing that. That's a busted move that can't make it into the game. I believe this is on the other fighting grass type. What is it? It's Lilligant. Uh, Lilligant Hisui. Yeah, fighting grass. Another better fighting grass type because this is just an Omni boost. This is literally just an Omni boost. No, we're not going to put that in the game. We're not putting that in the game. No, I'm not even going to entertain that. I, I guess if it if they make it anything, physical quiver dance, you know, that's all I hope it is. Physical quiver dance. Wave crash. The user shrouds itself in what? Oh, this is that new priority move that Basque Legion gets. This is actually really interesting. So Basque Legion uh, has adaptability and it has 112 base attack and 78 speed. So 78 is a little bit low, but this could be like a decent scarf Pokemon, a decent choice band Pokemon. And obviously with adaptability choice band coming off a 112 base attack, you know, moves are going to hurt and you can't be flinched. So this is like a hardened center counter. Um, and I believe this one is a priority move. So if this thing gets a 75 base power priority move, that's insane for it. I think that's actually like literally one of the best moves that this thing could have uh, conceptually. Because like I said, it's got that low base speed that it needs to make up for. 78 is not cutting it in 2023. Uh, and yeah, that's that's basically all I'm going to say about it. Uh, you need this thing to have a priority move. And while other Pokemon are going to get stuck using Aqua Jet, which is like 60 base power, if I remember. Or no, 40, sorry. Aqua Jet is like 40 base power. I always forget. Yeah, 40 base power? No. Um, and I think, yeah, no, it's 100% accurate. Even if it has less PP, even if Aqua Jet has, you know, 32 uses, if this thing has 10 uses in a VGC match, it's gonna get all of the all of the benefit it can get out of that in, in just a couple of turns. So yeah, I like that quite a bit. Wild Bolt Storm. This is Thunderous's move. May leave the target with paralysis, 95. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. Sorry, not adding that to the game. But if they do add it to the game with 80 base accuracy, I can only assume it's going to be like a 110 base power. Actually, now that I think about it, that's probably the best way to translate most of these moves because these are looking more and more like Hydro Pump clones the more I look at them. 80 base power, 5 P, or sorry, 80 accuracy, 5 PP, 95 in a game with like lowered offenses overall. If we look at Hydro Pump, if we look at Hydro Pump, oh, I guess we can just look at it in him. I forgot he gets it. 110 base power, 80 accuracy. Max is out at 8 PP, but it's actually five as like the, the standard before you PP max. So no, now that I think about it, it's probably just gonna be like Hydro Pump clones with like secondary effects, which makes you feel a little bit better. However, like I said, with Landorus, um, that's, that's like major wall breaking capabilities at the exchange for accuracy. So who knows? Anyways, that's my thoughts on all the moves that are from Pokemon Legends Arceus and how I think they might get translated into Generation 9. I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below, as always. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.